In this question, we are given that the probability of event A is 0 0.4, B is 0 0.5, and the probability of A and B is 0 0.2. The first question says, what is the probability of A? And then can you guys remember what this means? Well, in maths, that stands for or. So determine the probability of A or B using the probability formula. Now the probability formula we looked at in a previous video and that went like this. And so all we do is we fill in the values and so the probability of A they've told us is 0 0.4 plus the probability of B is 0 0.5 minus the probability of A and B which is 0 0.2. And if you go add all that together you get a value of 0 0.7. So the probability of A or B is 0 0.7. So what we have here is we have two events, A and B, and those two together make up a total of 0 0.7. So what would be the leftovers? Well, we know that probability is a fraction, and fractions always add up to a total of 1, or 100%. And so the next question says, what is the probability of A or B? But then it's got this little line over here. So let me just write that over here. Now what that line means is it's the mathematical way to say not. So it's saying, what is the probability that it is not A or B? Well, the probability that it is A or B is 0 0.7. And so the probability that it's not A or B would be 1 minus 0 0.7. And that would give us 0 0.3. Next one says, determine the probability of A only. Now, these questions are very difficult to look at by themselves. I mean, some people are really good at imagining it, but if you struggle with this, and I'm one of those people who sometimes struggle with these kind of questions, or how to visualize it, what I used to then do was to, you draw it in a Venn diagram, then it makes it really easy. So let me show you quickly. Then we've got two events, so we will put two circles on the diagram, and those are events A and B. Or A, A and B, oh, there we have it. So now this intersection point over here, Remember we saw in a previous video that those are the people or the events where both A and B occur together. So they've told us that A and B is 0 0.2, so that's going to be 0 0.2. The probability of A, which is this circle over here, should be 0 0.4. So the main place where people make mistakes is they go put 0 0.4 here because they tell me, yeah, but A is 0 0.4. But remember, a is the whole red circle. So if there's already a 0 0.2 over here, then you don't put 0 0.4 there, you're just going to put another 0 0.2 so that the total for A is 0 0.4. Then if we look at circle B, which is this one, they've told us that the probability of B is 0 0.5, but because we already have the 0 0.2 in, the, in the, this middle part, then this part would only be 0 0.3. So now have a look here. If we had to add all three parts together, that'll be the probability of A or B. Remember, A or B just means that it can be in A, B, or in both. That gives us the 0 0.7 that we saw in question one. Then we know that all probabilities, if they are given in fraction form or decimals, should always add up to one. And so those in the, on the inside add up to 0 0.7. And that is why on the outside we have 0 0.3. And that is what we saw in question two. Now, number three says, what is the probability of A only? Well, now we can see A only, that's this part over here. And so that's 0 0.2. But if we hadn't drawn the Venn diagram out, you might have been tempted to say 0 0.4. Next question is quite interesting. It says, and I'll write it over here. So we just need to know what this means mathematically. So this part here has an A with a little line over there. So that means not A and it must be in B. So we're looking for a place that is not A. Okay, so let's cross A out because that's not allowed. Okay, so not A, we've done that. So that's, so, so, not, so because we're not allowed to have A, we have crossed that part out, and they want us to have B. So they want two things. They don't want it to be in A. Okay, so we've blocked A out, and they want it to be in B. Well, that means the answer is over here. And so the answer for that is 0 0.3. So just once again, when they have this over here, it means and. So what they wanted was the probability for both of these to be happening at the same time. So it mustn't be A, 
and it must also be B at the same time. So it's all of B, but it mustn't be A. So for example, for if you had to circle all of B, that would be this. But then they also said that it can't be A. So that means that this little part over here can't be there. And that's why we ended up with only the 0.3. Okay, a bit of theory for the next three questions. Many people don't like this theory, but I promise you it's super easy. Complementary. So complementary goes like this. Complement events, well, they help each other. So mathematically, in probability, what that means is that if you add the probabilities together, you should get a 1. So for example, if you had to walk into a class and the probability of, of choosing a girl is 0 0.4, well, then the probability of choosing a boy is 0 0.6. These two event, events complement each other because together they add up to 1. That is what complementary means. They help each other to get to one. So let's see if probability of A and probability of B, well, if you had to add those up in this example, you're going to end up with 0 0.9. And so no, they don't complement each other. So the events are not complementary. Mutually exclusive means that they don't have anything in common. So for example, it looks like that. They don't have a part that interlinks, okay? So what that means is that this part here, the 0 0.2, that wouldn't be there if they were mutually exclusive. So even if you didn't have a Venn diagram, for mutually exclusive, you want the probability of A and B to equal to zero. But this probability of A and B, which is the part in the middle, that is equal to 0 0.2. So these events are not mutually exclusive. If the two circles are separate, or if you know that the probability of A and B is equal to zero, then we can call it mutually exclusive. They are excluded from each other. Independent. So whenever you see this in probability, you just have to remember the following. What you do is you go work out what the probability of A and B is in our example. And we said that the probability of A and B is 0 0.2. On the right hand side, you take the probability of A, which we said was 0 0.4, and the probability of B, we said was 0 0.5. You then go work out, oh no, that's already 0 0.2. You go work out this part over here, which is going to give us 0 0.2. And so if the right hand side and the left hand side are equal to each other, then we can call it independent. But if we ended up with 0 0.2 on the left and 0 0.15 on the right, then we would say that they are not independent, and so you would call it dependent. So whenever you do an independent question, just use this formula. If the left side is the same as the right, then we can say independent. So these are going to be independent.